Hi folks and welcome back for another video and on this uh, episode from the WTF we're going to take a look at a 10 watt QRP linear amplifier and this linear amplifier has got well for me it's got special significance I'm sure everybody's you know been exposed and, been, and uh, seen what's been going on in Ukraine on the news and uh, traditionally amateurs aren't supposed to be political um, but it's um, it's very difficult not to be um, so without getting too bogged down in politics I, uh, I thought I would just um, say my piece um, some of you may know I'm from a medical background so when you see the things that have been on the news recently what's going on in Ukraine uh, the humanitarian problems the uh, bombing of civilians etc it's um it's hard to feel um you know not to feel anything at all so uh it's uh, it's quite heart wrenching really anyhow um the reason why I put this video on is because um over the years um you know I've as you know I do a lot of homebrew stuff and I quite enjoy one of my sort of specialist uh, homebrew interests I guess is sort of using uh making valve equipment and particularly with um, a lot of the, the Russian stuff and I have sourced a lot of this stuff from various um, sellers on eBay um, and quite a lot of them are Ukrainian and uh, I would say that they've given me an excellent service and uh, without them I wouldn't have been able to do or build a lot of the projects that um, and a lot of the equipment that I have in the uh, in the shack here the bands have been noticeably quiet these days without Ukrainian stations. I've uh, had many QSOs with Ukrainian stations and um, as I understand it the uh, Ukrainian Radio Relay League has uh, basically uh, told them they're not allowed to, to use amateur radio or to, to broadcast um, uh, for the next 30 days and I think that will probably be you know, indefinite uh, for the time being. Um, it is quite, um, it is quite sad. Some of those guys, and I've had contacts with people in Kiev, Kharkiv, Donetsk, um, you know, all over Ukraine over the years. And it's quite worrying to think that a lot of those guys who are uh, radio amateurs like myself, you know, um, you know, they may not have homes anymore. They're you know that their situation may be extremely bad. And one can only hope that this situation um, improves, and I'm sure, I'm sure it will eventually. But, uh, but anyway, let's just hope that uh, that uh, that all that uh, uh, you know horrible things that are going on there eventually come to an end. So, with that, um, this video um, is of. Uh, you, in addition to the things that are going on in Ukraine, uh, I bought a, 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 um, a small QRP linear amplifier about two or three years ago, which I wanted to show you. Um, and it came from Ukraine. It was from, from I actually bought it off eBay from one of those eBay sellers. And it's, um, as you'll see in, in a minute, it's, um, it is quite spooky to just look at this sort of stuff and think, yeah, the guy who gave me that or sold it to me... Um, you know his house may not be there anymore you know he may be forced to leave the country uh, so uh, yeah it's quite worrying anyhow let's crack on with the video and uh, I want to show you this uh, nice little uh, linear as mentioned um, <clears throat> I bought this QRP linear uh, probably about mm, so about three years ago I think and it's one of those th sort of things you buy and you, you you think you're going to need it at the time and then you suddenly realize uh, well uh, probably not going to need it so I'll stick it on the shelf uh, so that's more or less what I did with this it was one of those things that I sort of stuck on the shelf to be, to be used on a rainy day so to speak but I've still got the original box here and it's um I don't know with cut with the current situation in Ukraine it's kind of like really spooky actually uh, <clears throat> because you know, you can. This is the uh, the label here, and I, you can clearly see that I've actually redacted or deleted some of the sender's details. But 
he does actually have a website. Uh, I think he's actually based in the USA now, and his his website's uh, 60dbm.com, and you can have a look at that. Um, he doesn't have this particular type of uh, amplifier available anymore, but he certainly has some there, and there's, there are a couple of things on his on his website. So um, I presume he's probably selling stuff from uh, maybe via the states or something, because I can't imagine things are coming out of Ukraine at the moment. Um, so uh, so there we go. But yeah, you can see there. Kiev. Uh, yeah, let's just hope uh, if he is out of the country, or if he is in the country, he's got. Uh, he might still have some of, of Kiev left after all this. Um, yeah, it's quite sad, really, when you think about it. Uh, so anyway, this is what it came in. This is the. Let me just show the open, the open the box quickly. That's my. Um, just remove all this stuff here. That's that's the uh, the linear, which came all the way from Ukraine. Uh, I've actually added a couple of wires there, but it literally came in this box with this padding. And I've only literally tested it today, and it uh, it does work. Um, we'll give you a demo in a minute after I've given you a closer look. Uh, so yeah, well, I'll get it set up on the bench or set the camera up at least and then we'll take a closer look at it. Well I got this Ukrainian linear amplifier on the bench now so we can take a closer look at it and just go through it. It's fairly simple I mean there's nothing uh, uh, too complicated about it <clears throat> and um, as you can see from the build it's pretty it's pretty well built actually uh, it's um, it's got a uh, fiberglass PCB and on the underside we've got a nice um, aluminium heatsink uh, for the two uh, MOSFETs there. So the inputs here are SMA connectors and I'm not a great fan of SMA connectors but I think in this application it's fine and I think it makes the board look quite neat um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I generally use BNCs and SO259s, but you can get adapters, uh, and that's actually what I'm using on, on this board. So if we have a closer look at the input side, I'll just see if we can zoom in on that. If my camera will let me, just get it centred a bit. So the input is obviously here. We've got an input transformer here, and another one there, and in the middle... <clears throat> we've got this op amp which is an OPA2674 uh, which is an ADSL line driver so I'm guess this is being used as a driver for the um, uh, for the gates of the, of the FETs for the two uh, um, power uh, FETs on both sides here you've got uh, two little pots which uh, I presume are adjusting the uh, bias to the uh, the gates of each um, uh, MOSFET, and that's kind of, that's a you know a pretty standard uh, topology for a, uh, a solid state linear amplifier. Obviously, this is a very simple one because it's uh, low power. The moving on to the power transistors, which you can see there. Zoom in a bit. I think that's about as much as I can do. Uh, <clears throat> these are uh, RD16HHF1s from Mitsubishi, and I'm pretty sure actually, also these are these are the same type or very similar to the ones that was that used in the Ellicraft uh, stuff. I had to replace one of the Ellicraft one of the uh, transistors from my Ellicraft KX3 uh, after it got after after it blew up from a uh, a static discharge. Well, when I say blew up, it just sort of stopped working, and um, I'm pretty sure it was what some very similar transistor to uh, to these. So, uh, assuming these are generally Mitsubishi um, transistors, which I think they are, um, you know, they should be pretty good for for this application and uh, capable probably of uh, quite a bit more power actually than uh, the 10 watts as stated uh, you know by the um, uh, well by the uh, 
specifications. It'd probably do a bit more than that, but uh, one doesn't want to uh, push it too hard. Otherwise, you know, FETs being FETs, they can uh, they can get damaged quite easily. But having said that, these FETs look quite easy to rip. If you had to replace any of these, these are, look very easy to, to sort out. You could just desolder them, put another one in there. So, so there we go. And then moving along, just to zoom out a bit, we've got if you can see that we've got an output uh, transformer there which is actually a binocular uh, t um, core a block binocular ferrite core uh, which is the sort of standard thing you have to match the uh, uh, output of the transistors to your 50 ohm uh, load just one other interesting thing on this uh, board which is worth a mention and uh, zoom in again uh, if you look here this is actually on the output so what they've done is they've left a bit of space here for you to add um, low pass filtering one of the things with uh, solid state linear amplifiers is that they they are prone to generating a lot of harmonics and Certainly if you're using them with any sort of power, um, 6 watts or 10 watts is probably alright. But if you're going to be using a bit more power, then you're probably going to need some sort of filtering on the output of this amplifier, a low-pass filter. And they've left um, pads here for a, um, a filter, uh, so you can use as many as you like. Uh, inductors and there's little pads for capacitors there and at the moment the inductor uh, space is shorted out by a uh, zero ohm uh, SMD resistor so you can take those off and then add a coil for whatever you want um, whatever band you want uh, so uh, so there we are so what we'll do is we'll um, connect this thing up and I'll just give you a quick demo of how much power it does I've got a little QRP transmitter in fact it's the little one I built in a mustard tin from quite a few videos ago I've, I've had that on the uh, the shelf of shame so to speak and haven't reused it that much so but it still works so um, uh, we'll connect that up uh, I think that produces at the moment when it's on 12 volts or thereabouts um, <clears throat> it produces about 800 milliwatts or probably maybe a little bit less uh, so that should be okay to drive this. We should be able to get uh, a few more watts out of it, which is quite handy. Uh, so let's do that. Right, I've got this uh, amplifier set up on the bench here. And uh, they've got the receiver on as well, though uh, there's quite a few strong stations um, all around at the moment on 40 metres. Uh, but... Uh, it, for the purpose of this demo, it's really the receiver's really uh, just to sort of uh, monitor the tone more than anything else. So, just to show you what we've got here. This is my uh, QRP transmitter. It's the old Coleman mustard transmitter that I made uh, a couple of years ago, I think. Still works, and uh, it's quite good for this demonstration. It produces about, I would say, about. Mm, maybe three quarters of a watt, something like that. Uh, very low power, uh, very simple, perfect for uh, driving this uh, uh, QRP uh, linear. And we've got the SWR meter, the power meter here, and Morse code key. So let's uh, turn everything on and see what happens. So I'll turn the linear on. Let's key it and give it a go. Oh, there we are. So just under five watts there. We should see what it sounds like. So, um, so yeah, that's just a quick demo of of, of it uh, of it working. And. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with this little thing. I think uh, it'd be good to put it up into a box and uh, make a nice little uh, uh, QRP amplifier, I think. And the other thing which you could use this for as well, it would also make quite a nice driver, perhaps for a uh, um, 
for a valve rig or something like that or anything else so quite a handy little um, uh, linear uh, so uh, yeah I'm quite pleased with this well made and generally works very well that's all folks and uh, catch you again on the next video